I, I just got me angry that we were being left in the dark ages. I didn't like it, and I still don't like it. I don't like to be put on the back burner. And so I thought, no, this is not going to happen. We deserve better than this. We are better. We are just like everybody else. So we want what they have. The South Park Barrio is a small three block section of Riverton, located a mere six city blocks from downtown. It's one of the oldest settlements in Riverton. In fact, it was one of the first expansions the city saw when it was still the original town of Riverton. This part of the city has long been home to Manitos, migrant families who, at the turn of the 20th century, left their heritage homesteads in New Mexico behind as they searched for better opportunity in other states throughout the Rocky Mountain region. This is Annie Mejarada. She grew up in the barrio with her 12 brothers and sisters. She's upset because despite being one of the older parts of town, for decades the barrio was neglected by the city and lacked basic needs like homes with running water, sewer mains, street lights, and paved roads. In 1986, fed up with the standard of living that they had been forced to endure for decades, she and her neighbors finally took it upon themselves to pave their own streets. But to fully understand their plight and their tenacity for community activism, you have to go back even further. On November 19, 1975, a public hearing was held at the Riverton City Council Chambers. The meeting was to discuss long and short-term goals for the city of Riverton. Of the 39 people in attendance that night, 90% were South Park Barrio residents. They were there to testify on the deplorable conditions they had been forced to live in for years, while the rest of the city grew around them. On the night of the hearing, community residents told council members that for 60 years they had endured muddy and dusty dirt roads, and that in all that time, no city paving or maintenance equipment had ever even come to the barrio to maintain the streets. Some of the residents still didn't have water or sewage lines to their homes, and argued sewer upgrades were needed before any paving or beautification projects could begin. In fact, sewer lines were a problem in the barrio. The few existing lines were so old that they were actually leaching into a nearby ditch, causing a health hazard. Other residents complained about abandoned and overgrown lots, and the lack of safety in street lights, and said that some lots had become junkyards and were creating a rat infestation in the neighborhood. What's worse, the barrio didn't meet the standards for the city fire code either. Out of date water lines meant no fire hydrants, so if a fire broke out there was no infrastructure in place to stop it. Mayor William Moffitt and Councilman William P. Williams and Richard Bennett were sympathetic to their plight and decided that they would solicit the state for a portion of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Community Block Grant funding. Moffitt said at the hearing, I have only four years in which to help you people. I consider I will have done a successful job as mayor if this is accomplished. Unfortunately, Mayor Moffitt would not fulfill his goal. The barrio was competing with other communities across the state for the same funding, and the request was ultimately denied. That trend would continue for 10 long years. Between 1975 and 1985, the city of Riverton and the barrio residents submitted seven requests for state and federal funding, only to be shot down each and every time during the pre-application process. Over the years, the city slowly improved sewer and water lines and added fire hydrants. But when the calendar turned over to 1986, the barrio was one of the last communities in Riverton city limits, still without paved roads. When Annie and Susanna approached the city representatives in the spring of 86, it wasn't to submit another grant application. The barrio residents had had enough and decided that they would do the work themselves. They hoped the city would help them by grading the streets and paying for some of the materials. Following several discussions, the city finally relinquished, but told the barrio residents that they would have to pay for and construct their own curbs and gutters. A deal was struck, and construction began at last. 
Oh, that was such a big project. And looking back, you know, I, I, it was enormous. And at the time, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But yeah, it was like, we just decided it was time because we got so tired of the whole city being upgraded, getting this, getting that. And here we were behind the times. We didn't have sewer, we didn't have good water lines or anything. So it was a constant fight. The letters to the editors, letter to the you know, the council, even letters to the state sanitation. And we finally got our water and we finally got our sewer. And then after that, you know, it was like, why don't we have sidewalks and paving the rest of the town does? So it's like, okay, we just kind of, you know, start talking about it. And so we talked to the city and it, it was a long process. We had to, you know, go try to get grants and, and you know, we don't know anything about stuff like that. But anyway, it was just, it, it, it helped. You know, we had, you know, um, a council member, Gus Backa is his name. He was a lot, a lot of help. And the mayor, uh, Albert Brown, was a lot of help also. And then, like Susan said, the senator was a lot of help. And, uh, but the people around here in the actual barrio, you know, I told Emilio, hey, Emilio, my brother, this is, uh, this is what we, we want to do. Do you think we can do it? And he said, yeah. He says, I'll get the guys all together and, and do it. we'll do it. We can, we can do it. Because they've always done this kind of work, construction work all their life. And then the women, okay, gals, let's see what we can do to help. We can't be out there shoveling and doing this heavy work. Let's do the cooking. So that's what we did. As I was growing up, I watched some of my older siblings being real involved in, uh, in improving the conditions of our neighborhood. And uh, so as, as I got older, and then I became involved as well. And in this particular project, I was working at the, I was, a student at the University of Wyoming working on my bachelor's degree in social work and I was in a class on a community organization at the time and so um, um, I got involved because I wanted to. My sister Annie was the, the uh, main instigator of the project and my sister-in-law Helen and they came to me and asked me to help and, and, and just the fact that the rest of the town had paving but when you hit the barrio, there was no paving, no sidewalks, no curb and gutter. And that in itself seemed just wrong. And so that was uh, uh, the impetus between, uh, be behind my wanting to be involved, yeah. We worked as a team. When it came to the actual physical labor, everybody came out, everybody. The women were cooking and and being the gophers for whatever was needed. And the men were doing the physical labor. They were doing all of that concrete work, just really, really tough work and nonstop and until it was done. My name is Emilio Vigil, and I was a foreman on the job. And that's uh, um, about it. I, I took care of the whole crew and finally got it done. So that's about the main thing. <laughs> well, each lot that we put in, it was uh, 300, uh, 300, uh, 300 bucks for each lot. City wanted 3,000, that's why we done it. Because mm -hmm. 50 foot a lot, you know, and it's uh, $3,000 because they wanted to charge for the material, they wanted to charge for the excavation on it and, and the labor. So we, me and Annie got together and we decided to hell with it. I'll get the forms and everything else and I quit my job over at the sewer plant and she was uh, handle all the money from the people. And we put it in for that price, it was pretty cheap. By this time, there had been a lot of publicity surrounding the residents' efforts. The greater community of Riverton understood well the story of the barrio and sympathized with their Manito neighbors to the south. So when the time finally came for the work to begin, 
They rallied around the residents of the barrio and chipped in. Ready Mix, the cement truck uh, company, gave us a discount on the cement. And uh, well, uh, Major's Oil, because these big trucks would go through there, you know, and they donated uh, six yards of cement. That was uh, almost maybe five, six hundred dollars. And then we were pretty lucky, you know, the A.D. Martins, they uh, gave me all the cement tools because I went and asked, you know, and they gave me all the cement tools. And then we had uh, Logan Packing. They furnished the hot dogs and the hamburgers, no charge. And then uh, uh, Pepsi furnished all the Pepsi, no charge. And Coors and Budweiser furnished all the beer, no charge at all. <laughs> and then they had a bet. All the town people had a bet that we'd we'd make one block and quit. And they were, when we done it, we threw, had a party down and finished it off here. Mayor and all the important people showed up, <laughs> except our guys working. <laughs> How's it going, Bonnie? How come you're showing me your good side? Huh? How come you're showing me your good side? Oh. <laughs> but this is the way it looks now. And they're pouring the sidewalk over there in front of Jim Martinez is now. We had to do our own digging in this site right here on 4th Street. The contractor didn't have enough money. So uh, we borrowed a backhoe from Cecil Valdez. Chiefy and Emilio were on the backhoe and Arturo went the evenings when we got out of work. They dug it out, put some road gravel on it, and uh, the guy just took turns compacting it down. This is the way it looks when it's formed up for the, for the sidewalk on it. And there they are, pouring, pouring the cement to the sidewalk. Adio, 
those dirt roads, goodbye. I won't miss you. Hello, paving. Welcome home, been a long time. Almost 20 years. But July 23rd, 1986. Welcome to Park Street, Southport West. After years and years of waiting, and more than a decade of community activism, it took the Manitos just two short months to complete their paving project. According to Emilio, his crew did such a good job that there's hardly been any need for repairs in the past 30 years. So much of the paving in the neighborhood is still original. I'm standing here on Monroe looking south on South Northwest. We've got our paving, curb and gutter, sidewalks, whole works. Down Third Street. There's Emilio's house. Paving in front of Emilio Street all the way. All right. In 2016, those who were still able to celebrated the 30th anniversary of their accomplishment in Barrio Park. <laughs> well, the reason that we're all here, and I send out the invitations, 30 years ago we undertook this big, big project. And at that time, I didn't think it was such a big project because everything clicked. But looking at that video, it's, it's touching. It's really, really touching. All the hard work that went into it, everybody had a little bit to do with it. And we all pulled together, and it just goes to prove that Anything can be accomplished okay. if everybody works together. That's right. You know, and, and I, I realize that, you know, most of the people that were really, really the workers out here are gone, but their children are here and they can learn by what we did that it's possible. That's right. Anything is possible as long as you set your mind to it and you got a lot of people that are with you. It was a beautiful thing. It was just a beautiful, hard thing, and everybody just, and like I was telling the kids, you know, nowadays I tell them, it's possible if you set your mind to it, and you work, and you get your, you get the community together, anything's possible. You just have to make sure that you want to do it. So I, I'm proud of what we did. I am so proud. And our theme song was, we did it our way. And we did. We did. 
<laughs> do I work good or do I work good, John? You're good. Okay. What do you think of the project so far? It's fantastic. Break it. In the barrio, in. We did it our way. Barrio theme song. We did it our way. <laughs> they said it couldn't be friends. done. Yep, with a lot of help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Bye-bye. See you on the other street. Okay. <laughs>